So, so here's the theorem. And uh, we'll call this Faulting's uh, first theorem. This is uh, And uh, it says that if we take um, x over uh, k, a curve, and, um, and let's say k for right now, uh, we'll take k to be equal to q. Um, and we take the genus of x. If this is bigger than 2, then this implies that the number of uh, k points is going to be uh, finite. Okay, so there's this theorem, and so the the example is the example that you should you should keep in mind is that if you take x to be uh, like y to the 100 is equal to x to the 100 plus x to the 99 plus one or something, so you take something of high degree, uh, and then what we have is the the genus here, uh, so this is high degree, so this is um, uh, this will have a finite number of points. Okay, and what's the genus? So I sh we should say what the genus is. Genus is going to be um, the number of global differential forms on X. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about the, the, the this is this was called the Mordell problem. It was conjectured by Mordell. Uh, I am going to connect this to this thing called the, the Mordell-Lang problem, and it's about uh, certain the closures of, of sets of, of rational points. So um, okay, so for, for uh, A is going to be, and well, we, this is going to be the setup, so A is going to be an abelian variety uh, over a field K. And um, there's, there's two topologies we can, we can consider. Uh, there's, there's this Zariski topology, so this is a uh, so this is cut out by the zeros of polynomial equations, and then there's this configuration topology. And I'm going to just explain uh, how these two things are related. So there's this risky topology, and this is for zeros of polynomials, and this is the configuration topology. So the closed sets, I'm going to describe the closed sets. So let me give you um, a definition um, of what the configuration is. So definition. And we look to we look to be okay here. Um, so a configuration uh, is in uh, A, and then we're going to take the algebraic closure of K. Uh, is so this is where it's going to be a subset of here. Is um, a set of the form. Um, here we're going to take a finite union of translates of abelian subvarieties. So this is a point of our, our abelian variety, and then this is a this guy here is a, a abelian uh, subvariety. So a closed uh, a closed subgroup closed in the Zariski topology. And so we can take the points of it, and then we can look at translates of this. And this is what a configuration is. Um, let me give you a picture of a configuration. So the picture of a configuration. So here's what to think about. Um, so we can, we can maybe think of this in maybe some type of three-dimensional space. So an abelian variety is kind of, it's a, it will, the complex points are going to be a torus if you look at it over the complex numbers. So what we can do is, is we can, so sub-varieties will be like, um, maybe it'll look like planes maybe, so this is like a, a one sub-variety. But we're going to take unions of them here, so they can meet, say, in a line. And then we could maybe take um, so some some stray lines somewhere. Uh, so like here, uh, maybe maybe there's another one somewhere over here. Okay, um, and then we could we could add some points. Okay, and so this thing here 
is what the union of uh, from one to say a finite number of these guys of B I K L G plus B I. So these are translates of abelian subvarieties. Okay, so this is what these things look like. So we have these kind of like planes. This is kind of planes in, in higher dimensional space. So this is the drawing. Okay, so now I can define what the configuration topology is. So a definition. So the configuration topology Uh, on uh, this the set is um, the topology where the closed sets sets are configurations. Okay, and so let's do some notation. Um, okay, so if we take a subset of uh, the points in the algebraic closure of our abelian variety, um, we can we'll let this be the Zariski closure. I, I should mention here that this presentation that I'm doing right now is, is due to Barry Mazur. Um, and this is going to be the configuration closure. So we have closures in two topologies. Okay, so we can here we can look at the zero locus. So we take, you know, we we take the the zero locus of the polynomials of all the polynomials vanishing at S, and here we take kind of the the um, minimal configuration that contains the set S. All right. So this is what the configuration topology is. Is now I can state the theorem. So uh, the the uh, the theorem. This is also this is faulting second theorem. It says that um, if uh, a over k is an abelian variety, so let's take k to be equal to q here. Uh, it's an abelian variety. Um, and then let's say that uh, uh, we'll take a su subset of the uh, the algebraic closure points. Okay, a subset. Okay, so then it says the following. It says that if the rank of the group generated by S, so this thing is an abelian group. And so here we can consider the group um, generated by S, rank of group generated by S. Uh, then this implies that the configuration closure is equal to the Zariski closure. Okay, so it says here that if we have a particular shape of our our or set, the set S has a particular finiteness condition, then uh, the, the two topologies, uh, the, the, the Zariski closure, will, will look like a bunch of, it'll have a very special shape. It'll look like translates of abelian subvarieties. And this is uh, amazing. Um, okay, so, so I want to explain now how this theorem uh, is implies so this is okay. So that, let me give another background. So this thing here was called. Uh, so this is a remark. Um, this was conjectured um, by Mordell. And, uh, so this is, I guess, the generalization uh, was due to Lang. And so sometimes this is called the Mordell-Lang problem. Okay. So the Mordell-Lang problem was solved by faultings. Um, all right. That's that's nice. Um, I'm going to explain now, I'm going to move towards uh, showing how um, this theorem 
uh, is Im implies the the other theorem, the Mordell theorem. Uh, so I need to to give some some uh, some setup. Um, so let me give a, a definition slash proposition here. So it's about an existence here. So so let's take a x over k, a pointed variety, a pointed uh, variety. Um, then the, 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 the proposition part is that there exists an abelian variety and a map um, from x to the uh, to this guy. And so this is an abelian variety, an abelian variety uh, called the Albanese. So this is going to be uh, the Albanese. And um, it has the property that it is initial, which is initial uh, among uh, the category of varieties uh, with maps from X, a category of, let's say, abelian varieties with maps from X. So that the, the, this says the following: It says that if we have a morphism, so given any, so uh, so what does this mean? So this means that if we're given a morphism from X to some abelian variety, uh, we also have this map here to this Albanese, right? So this is the Albanese. We have this map, and it says that there exists a map here uh, th such that this 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 thing this this diagram commutes. So again, it says that for all f, there exists a g making this commute. Um, okay, so this is this is what the Albanese is, and we're going to use this to prove um, the the uh, we're going to use this idea. So um, in in our construction, I'm actually going to use it a little bit later too. Um, so let me make a remark that that um, uh, or an example. Uh, when x is a curve, then the, the Albanese of x is just the Jacobian of x. Um, okay, so another important property that we'll need, uh, an important property, uh, property, and then I'm going to use this in a later video. Um, it says that uh, if uh, the, the there's an isomorphism here from... The, the sheaf of differentials of the Albanese uh, to uh, H0 of X omega 1 of X. So this is an isomorphism. So this is a, a theorem, I guess, so that these two things are the same. Or you can consider it part of the construction. Either way. Okay. So um, so this, is, this, this explains the Albanese, and it's a generalization of the Jacobian. In general, I should mention here that this thing collapses a lot. So if you just take a general variety, unlike Jacobians, you can embed. This is an embedding, a closed immersion. Um, here, this, this is not, in general, a closed immersion, and, and this is going to, like, a lot of this is going to collapse. So this has um, positive dimensional fibers here. And the fibers are, are really related to... Um, uh, an invariant called the Kadaira dimension of, of X, which I, I'm going to get to as well. Okay, so uh, I want to explain now how the Mordell um, conjecture, or sorry, sorry, uh, Mordell Lang implies Mordell. So, so uh, uh, Mordell Lang, I'm now in a position where I can do this, implies Mordell. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna prove this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, x over k. This is gonna be a curve of, uh, uh, and this is gonna be a genus bigger than or equal to two. And again, g is uh, h zero. Uh, so the dimension of this thing of omega one of x. Um, okay, so since it's a curve, uh, we have this uh, embedding into the Albanese of x. So this is the Jacobian of x. And let's just call this A. Um, and there's this kind of a, a, a lemma that we need. Uh, and this is due to Mordell. And his lemma says that um, 
that uh, AQ is finitely generated. It's a finitely generated, or uh, finitely, let's say for K is equal to Q, uh, finitely generated abelian group. Okay, and so what does this say? So this says, so since it's a finitely generated abelian group, um, there's there's kind of this, this thing that says that um, we have this direct sum of this torsion part and this free part. Okay, and in particular, um, this thing, this tells us that, uh, uh, this, this theorem here tells us the, the, the Mordell's lemma implies that AQ is finite rank. So, uh, so we're going to be able to apply um, this type of theorem to subgroups or subsets of AQ. Okay, so we're going to use this idea. And so we notice that where we're we going to apply this to, we're going to apply this to S is equal to XQ. Um, so this is a subset of AQ. So it's a subset of a finitely generated group. So this is a subset of a finitely generated group. So in particular, it's going to be finite rank. Okay, so, so this is by the mordell lang problem. So this is faulting second theorem. Um, the configuration closure uh, is going to be equal to the Zariski closure. Well, okay, so here's this. And, and we know that this is contained, the Zariski closure is contained in the, the Q alge points of this. So this is, it's contained in X. So this says that, okay, so this says, the, this says that the configuration closure, closure of the rational points, of the rational points of um, X, are contained in X. Contained in X. Okay, well, this thing here is equal to, by definition, some union of translates of abelian subvarieties. It's an algebraic closure uh, plus some points here. And this thing here. Okay, but um, but notice this thing here is is still in here Q alge, but um, since X is uh, has genus uh, two, uh, the, it has no X has no abelian subvarieties, has no abelian subvarieties in it. Inside it. I mean, if these were dimension one, they would be what's called elliptic curves, but this is a genus two curve and you can't have a, a genus one curve inside of a genus two curve. That's, that's no good. So these things all must be zero. Okay, so this thing tells us that this thing is equal to the union N of uh, BIs. So just these, these BIs. And so this is a finite number of points. Okay, so here we're taking the, the configuration closure. So again, this thing contains XQ. So in particular, XQ, right, uh, is, is actually going to be contained in a, in a finite set of points. So this implies that this must be finite. And that, that proves, that, that shows how Mordell Lang implies Mordell. Okay. Okay, so what about higher dimensions? So, um, so I'm gonna, I, I'm actually gonna stop the video here and then I'm going to resume in a second and uh, it, with the the higher dimensional version of this um okay